Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 200. On this episode of the podcast, I'm speaking with Joseph Vero of Vero Engineering. The arrival of Vero Engineering to the knife scene is some of the only evidence we have that perhaps 2020 wasn't all bad. In a short period of time, Joseph's designs have become some of the most coveted and sought after small batch production knives on the market. His folders and pocket tools are designed with the sophisticated eye of a knife collector and the mind of a design engineer. And I'm excited that it brings him to the Knife Junk Junkie podcast. Uh, but first, are you crazy about knives? Do you like this show? Well, check us out on Patreon. There are three levels of support. You get Knife Junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast, early access to the interview show and the supplemental show with no ads and more. Your support helps fund the infrastructure needs of the show, which are many, uh, like hosting servers, apps, and equipment, as well as knives for review and giveaway. So check us out on Patreon and see what helping us gets you. The quickest way to get there is by going uh, to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Joseph, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for doing this. Bob, thanks for having me. First of all, congratulations on 200 episodes. I am honored to be on number 200. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, sir. The honor is mine. The honor is mine. You know, uh, as I mentioned in your setup, uh, your knives and uh, you, Vero Engineering, has uh, you've sort of just uh, raged onto the scene in the past year. I can't, I can't imagine it's been much more than a year. And you've made an incredible impression. Uh, uh, how did you... How did you get into this? How'd you get into knives? So technically I started the, the company two years ago and it's almost exactly two years now. Um, around March of 19, I, I was working for a company as, as a design engineer and had a little bit of downtime in my design for that company. Uh, we, we moved the product that I was working on into the production phase, which doesn't allow me to do a lot of um, design work you know, troubleshooting and, you know, a lot of other fun stuff, but not actually design. Um, and while I had that lull, uh, my wife was pregnant at the time and I needed something to do at night. So I would sit in front of the, the, the TV with her, you know, one hand on her belly, the other one on my laptop, designing stuff just for fun. And one of those things happened to be uh, a knife. Um, before that, I was actually a, a, a knife enthusiast. I have been for a really long time, um, had a nice collection going and kind of just decided to design one for fun. It kind of went from there. Well, okay. So you just designed it for fun. Obviously there's a lot that goes into actually, um, you know, between designing something for fun on the couch and having it come to market. Uh, but 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 before we get there, like what was this? What were the kind of products you were designing for a living um, when you were working at your old design job? So I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, uh, I guess by schooling. I worked as a design engineer for a company that we supplied law enforcement with tech. So if they were uh, a couple of things I designed were drones to help SWAT um, clear buildings while keeping the officers safe, uh, data link boxes to allow them to get video feeds from aerial, aerial assets, drones, helicopters, um, things, kind of cool things where like uh, the officer in the would have a hand controller. I would design the hand controller. Uh, wow, the point cool. man would have a a screen on his wrist that he could see with the drone is seeing. You know, really cool, fun things that um, I was. I really liked my job. I really liked my job. I, I love the things that I was able to design there. 
Yeah, it's it's like your little uh, bit of Iron Man, you know. Just, yes, absolutely. Just that that wrist control. Soon you'll be a fighter fighter plane. That's that's pretty cool. So how did that kind of very interesting? I mean, to me especially, like you know, drones they they beg they beg for that kind of role, and it's kind of interesting to think about. But how did designing that kind of uh, product inspire or feed into your knife designs? So the, the, the funny thing is I, I got very good at CAD in, in, a, in, a, in an unusual way. Um, a, lot of, a lot of my friends that did design work for jet engines, they, they had a very specific way they had to um, design. Uh, they had, they had a, a set criteria of things that needed to be created, and then and then they would create that within those criteria. Mine was mine was very different. I had to create something that I was thinking of, something that I had very little information about, and I just had to go out, go and create it. You know, uh, a housing around a hand controller that had a screen that that had multiple antennas in it, um, just out of nowhere. So when I did that, uh, I, I realized that it, it kind of transitioned to, to designing other things like uh, knives and tools. Um, so when I ended up designing uh, my first knife design, uh, I, I didn't have anything to go off of. I didn't really just, I didn't take the uh, specs of another knife and convert it into it. I just designed it to see what the design would look like uh, when I was done. And I was, ended up being happy with it. So uh, I'm presuming or assuming it was the impulse you're talking about. Um, how so? Designing a knife is one thing. You're designing how it looks when it's open, how it looks when it's closed. Uh, but there is some sophistication, and you are a design engineer. So so I'm, if anyone's going to figure it out, it's going to be you. But what was that learning curve like? Figuring out the mechanics and the the locking open and the shut and all of that of a folder. So. The, the mechanics actually was the entire reason I designed the knife in the first place. I was explaining to a friend how a lot of the knives that I owned had flipper tabs that stuck out the back. And everybody knows what I'm talking about that's ever owned a flipper tab knife. Uh, most knives have flipper tabs that kind of stick out right about there. And when they stick out there, the, the, the moment of force is far from the pivot. So when you're actually actuating the knife, you're putting potential energy on the flipper tab out here and you're flipping it open. You actually need less energy to, to flip that knife out. And putting less energy into it means you sometimes, for some knives, don't actually get a very satisfying flip out of it. You have to prime it extra to get a satisfying flip. And I know that sounds stupid because you know, who cares? The knife opens and you get to use it and then it works as a knife. But sometimes you want a, you know, uh, to, to function a certain way. So I was trying to explain that to a friend of mine. And in doing that, I ended up designing my first knife to show him how I wanted the flipper tab to work. So if you're not familiar with any of my knives, I don't blame you. Um, I take all of my flipper tabs and I put them in line with the, the back of the knife. And I try to keep it as close to the pivot as possible. So the line of action on that flipper is really close to the pivot and kind of high up. And what that allows for is it allows for you to prime the, 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 the flipper tab, which you actually don't really even need to do. And it allows you to kind of slingshot the knife out. And it creates a really satisfying flip when it does that. So when you say slingshot, you you mean like how they they slingshot slingshotted Apollo thirteen around the, it? It's very close to the pivot, and it has that whip feel. Right, exactly. Uh, so if you think about it this way, if you were to take a, a traditional flipper tab that's stuck out here, and it extended, and you extended it, let's say three inches. And then you try to flip the knife open. The knife's probably just gonna go flip, just like that. 
So the closer that it is to the pivot allows you to put the force really close to the pivot and allows you to actuate the, the, the flipper with almost all of your energy going towards taking that blade out and opening it up that way. Um, and it's actually very simple to do that way. Um, here you can see, I'll try to get it with the, my pinky. <laughs> so all of the energy, you actually don't need that much energy, but all of the energy now goes into flipping the knife open. So I kind of had to, I had, I had to explain that to somebody. You can't really use a pen and paper. You can't, you can't kind of vocalize that. So I, I designed it. Very nice. And you had the means to, to build it eventually. Uh, but, but before we get there, um, you talk about priming a flipper. What exactly are you talking about? So my buddy, Adam Purvis, makes this amazing knife. It's the, uh, the Zerks uh, inner gold knife. Um, I love this knife. It does have more of a traditional flipper tab. And this flipper tab works really well. He actually keeps it kind of close to the spine of the knife also. Let's see if I can get that there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it does work similar uh, to how my flipper tabs do. But again, it is behind. It is behind and kind of in line with the pivot. So when you prime it, what you're doing is you're actually taking some potential energy and pushing against the flipper tab before you actually actuate it. Hmm. And what that does is that allows you to take the potential energy in your finger and give you a much better flip when you actually do actuate it. Okay, that's 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 what I thought you were talking about. You hear sometimes people talk about preloading and stuff like that. And you don't hear about that too much uh, since, since ball bearings have come into the picture that was a lot uh used to hear that a lot with like old hinderers on uh on nylon you you had to preload it and get it and yep. then you'd get a satisfying flip but you so with this with this very flat um flipper tab you bring the action much closer to the pivot <clears throat> and it and it seems to whip out um uh, so this might answer my question but how so you come up with a design on the couch, <clears throat> one hand on your wife's belly, one hand on the computer, and it becomes a knife, uh, like an actual knife in real life. That was a pretty um, nice break in to the industry. Do you think it has to do with the innovation of that flipper tab? What, what do you think it was that helped you break in and make a name for yourself in uh, in such a strong way? So great question. Um, there's, I think there's kind of two pieces to that. The first is, is the flipper tab. It's, it's a little, it's a little different and, and it promotes having a conversation, uh, especially between knife guys who potentially would buy, you know, a, a production knife like this. Um, it, it allows them to have that conversation saying, oh, hey, you remember how you were talking about that one knife that had that weak detent that you couldn't flip open without flipping your wrist? This is potentially a solution to that type of uh, flipper tab, light detent problem. Um, so when I actually ended up taking my prototype uh, impulse to Blade Show, so this is actually uh, the, the Gen 1 impulse, um, I got my prototypes and I took it to the 2019 Blade Show. And it was such an interesting experience because I knew that the knife worked well because of the prototyping that I personally did. Um, I prototyped it with a 3D printer. Now, a 3D printed knife will... So, a 3D printed knife is interesting because you don't get the tolerances you get with an actual production knife. And then I, I moved into CNC. Um, but you don't get those tolerances and you, you can't do the same things you can do with a, with a normal prototyping. But one thing I found was that the flipper tab still worked. I was able to 3d print a, a knife flipper design that worked in 3d printing. So I said, if it works in 3d printing, it damn well better work as a production knife. So when I first got the production knife myself, 
I flipped it out and I was like, oh, it works exactly as I was hoping it would. Then um, I proceeded to go through Blade Show with it and showed it off to first my friends that were there and then people that I knew, uh, you know, other makers and stuff. And the reaction that I would get from it, it became a joke between me and my friends. The reaction would go, they would go like this. They would take it, they would flip it. Oh, <laughs> every, single, every single one would go, oh, like, oh, I wasn't expecting that to work as well as it did. Oh, well, so that's funny because that's one of the um, one of the comments you get most from YouTube reviewers is how gratifying it is to open it. And you you said before, I mean, this is something I go back and forth on. You said before, oh, how important is it, you know, that it flips out nicely and this and that? Well, it is important, especially on a luxury item like this. <clears throat> It's about, you know, it's a prestige knife. It's about the entire experience. It's like you don't get a Rolls Royce and, uh, well, it's really luxurious inside, but we decided to put a really weak engine in it. You know, it, that doesn't pass muster. It's the whole experience that you're, that you want. Right, exactly. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing worse than, uh, I, I know your audience knows exactly what I'm talking about. Looking forward to getting a knife and, you see the knife and you know you like the design of it and you're 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 waiting for it to come in the mail you check your window 30 times to see if the, <laughs> the mailman has come by and then he does come and then you go get it you flip out whatever knife that you currently have that's not as good as whatever knife that you're about to open you rip <laughs> open a package and you get it out and and it, and it fails to fire on you your first flip i mean there's just, i mean there's nothing you, you already don't like that knife, unfortunately. Yeah. It doesn't well, matter how great the design is. It's more work. It's like my life is filled with work and things I have to learn and get better at. Uh, now I have to figure out how this thing goes. And it's probably going to give me a new um, uh, callus. <laughs> so, well, you know, some of, the, some of the best knives and some of the worst knives give you a new callus when you're, when you're breaking them in. Um, yeah. So, I, so if, you do this. You want to work that hard. Yeah, right. Exactly. Knife. Otherwise, then, you just sell it. <laughs> but to your point, yeah, it's a it's a total uh, total buzzkill. And here you have something that um, that is for knife people, for people who are actually going to seek out your knives. They're not easy to get. They're going to seek out your not uh, your knife. They want the full on experience. Now you do something else in your designs that I think is really uh, cool, and it is such a nerdy knife person thing uh design flourish and i love it and i think you know what i'm talking about but it's the it's the the spidey flick pocket you have on the back side so the, uh, i said there was two parts to why i think my knife maybe spoke to people when i originally showed off my first design um one I, one i definitely think is the flipper tab i think the fact that it is different kind of warrants just having a conversation about. Um, and the other thing is aesthetics. I, a lot of, uh, it again, also became a joke was that people would say, oh, that's, that's clean. <laughs> and it became a joke between my friends. They would giggle when the person would go, oh, and they would all wait for it. And they would go, oh, that's a clean design. And then they would laugh. And, <laughs> and it just it literally it just became this fun thing. With, it, it was a really cool experience. And in that was was the was the clean aesthetics and the design behind the knife. And um, so I think that just to just to kind of tie that up, uh, the two things I think were kind of the uh, uh, the precipice for why my knives kind of became started out the way they did. Um, now that being said, another fun thing is the Spidey Flick slot here. Um, I like. I've owned a bunch of Spydercos. I think they're phenomenal knives. And I said to myself, if I ever designed a knife, um, you better be able to middle finger flick it. And um, this one is very satisfying to be able to do that too. 
That's such a clean design, Joseph. How did you come up with oh, such oh. a... <laughs> you know, when I, when I was uh, setting you up, I, I said uh, sophisticated, you have a sophisticated eye. And, and it's I guess that's kind of a way of saying that your designs are clean. But it, they, they seem obviously... Obviously, from someone who loves knives, uh, how? Tell me a little bit about your collection and and how that those knives have inspired some of your designs. So obviously, um, Spider Co. Um, some may say that Spider Co. designs des design aesthetic um, is different. And uh, I would agree with that. They're, you know, some of their designs are are, are function over form, I think, or, you know, maybe to, to, to some people's eyes. Um, I found their designs super functional. I loved a lot of their designs um, and I loved how they fit in your hand. I loved that they just became an extension of your hand and they worked and they worked really well. They did what they were supposed to do, what they set out to do with that knife and they did that very, very well. I wanted to ensure that my knives even though they may just, you know, in my mind, be clean and aesthetic, were still functional. Um, so I, I learned a lot of that from Spyderco and from a lot of the knives that I've owned from them. Um, other knives that I've owned, I know a lot of people are going to cringe when I say this. Um, I owned a lot of Strider knives. Um, Strider knives were zero frill, all function. Uh, I loved how robust they were. Um, I loved how simple they were. You know, I, I'm a bearings person. I love mm -hmm. all of my knives come with ceramic bearings, ceramic detents. Um, they all are droppy knives. You have to be careful. You will, you will start etching a, a <laughs> slot into your thumbnail. Um, but the Strider knives worked and they worked very well. Yeah. So, so those kind of things, I wanted to ensure that even though my design looked very good in CAD, and hopefully looked good in the Instagram post because let's be honest, a lot of this stuff really is just man jewelry. Um, I want to ensure that they were they were aesthetically pleasing, mm -hmm. a clean design, and functional. Um, so that's why I did a lot of the prototy prototyping that I did. I wanted to make sure that my fingers fell exactly where I wanted them to. It fit in my hand exactly the way that I wanted it to fit. There were few hot spots because I mean hot spots are kind of inevitable with anything that you do uh, but I wanted to make sure that it did fit well um, I personally like to choke up high on the knife and put my pointer here so that I can do some nice fine detail work with it um, but also if you want to you can you can move back on it put your two fingers in this groove here mm -hmm. And it just it just fits in your hand, and you feel like you you have a nice purchase on it, and you can do the tasks that you want to. Um, so again, the, the 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 functionality of the knife was really important to me. Um, going through the the prototyping stages that I had, and then ultimately with Best Tech, who produces who they manufacture my knives, um, that was a big thing for me also. Uh, but like I said, aesthetics are super important. Let's be honest; nobody mm -hmm. wants to put an ugly knife in their Instagram post. Um, so a lot of the knives that I owned previously, uh, Chris Reeves, I think Chris Reeves has one of the most aesthetically beautiful knives that mm -hmm. were ever created. The, the Sebenza is just an almost perfect looking knife. Um, so I, you know, I want to ensure that that was also a key piece of it as well. Yeah. You can tell about how someone feels about a knife, especially a special knife, uh, like the kind you make by how they, by the verb they use is, are they going to carry this today? Or are they going to wear it? I, I catch a lot of people on uh, our, our live Thursday show. There's like, uh, when I do a pocket check, well, today I was wearing my such and such to me, that's like what you said. It's like jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, I was today, I was wearing my, my Vero uh, impulse, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I think that says something about it. aesthetics are incredibly important, but you look at your knives, you, you've been holding up the impulse. I'd like to check out some of your others also. Um, but, but to look at them, um, they have a, a classic look to them. They also seem quite sturdy and stout. And when you mentioned um, Strider, I guess, I guess some people bristle at Strider. Uh, I don't know what that's all. I, I mean, I have some idea what that's all about, but I, 
I can cleanly divorce that from the knives themselves. And I think they're awesome. I love them. And since you mentioned that, I, 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 I'm not even going to say that I see an influence, but something about the handles, I see it. Like it's a solid, the, the handles you design with that big center swale, it's a big solid handle, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a lot to hold on to. So it's not just elegant, but it also looks like you could hold it and really horse it through some material. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so the complete opposite side of that is a smaller, daintier knife, which <laughs> I'll get into now. Um, so <laughs> My second knife was the uh, the, the synapse. So uh, the first knife you saw was the the impulse, which has a tanto. Um, I really wanted to move into a a drop point blade uh, with overlays. Mm -hmm. So my the second knife was the the synapse here, uh, which also has the uh, the milled pocket and the same flipper tab up top for flipping. Um, it works really well on a smaller blade like this as well. Uh, sometimes a flipper tab doesn't work well for larger blades, and right. sometimes it doesn't work well for smaller blades. Um, so I was very happy that this worked extremely well. Um, Oof, that's and, good. Yeah, exactly. So being able to do it a pinky as well um, and get a, a pinky and get a satisfying flip out of it is is uh, very interesting to do. So, let me ask you this: Does having um, having that same flipper work in both a small blade and a large blade kind of means it's proven across you, the platforms you're working in? Does that mean that that's a sort of um, um, slam dunk part of the design process? Like, okay, I know I know that this part works, so I don't need to worry about that so much anymore. It's all these other things. The um, after I designed the the synapse, a very good friend of mine said, "All right, you did that. Can you do it again?" And what he meant was the synapse and the impulse um, are similar designs. They have very similar design aesthetics. They both have um, kind of. Um, similar handle designs. They have the, the the milled pocket on one side because I like having a clean show side for the blade. Um, and they have the, the flipper tab. And he said, all right, well, you know, kind of challenged me, he said, all right, do it again. Can I make another, hopefully, um, popular knife? So I said, challenge accept <laughs> accepted. <laughs> And I made a completely different knife. Now, yes, it does have similar, uh, you know, design aesthetics on the handle. Which, let's just be honest, I like it, so I, yeah. I added them. Um, but you can tell that this is a very different knife. Yes. So, it has a sheep foot. This is the axle. This has a sheep's foot blade. Uh, it has the milled pocket on both sides, and there's a reason why it has a milled pocket on both sides because it doesn't have. A flipper tab, a rear flipper tab. And this way, when you pull it out of your pocket, you can easily thumb flip it open as well. Uh, but it is, in fact, a front flipper. Oh. For those that like a front flipper knife, and you can do an over the top flip on it. Um, and you, you were talking about people saying how they, you know, some people wear their knives and some people use their knives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, jokingly almost called this the APO, the Vero APO, which would have been Vero Amazon package opener. <laughs> nice. I like that. Because, because I know that a very large percentage of people that buy this knife, they're not going to go put yeah. on some wood with it. They're, they're mm -hmm. not, they're, you know, they're not going to cut a hole in their drywall with it. <laughs> no. They're going to open up their wife's Amazon package that came in. Yeah, uh, I got because, this, baby. I got this. Yeah. I, I, do I have a knife? Of course I have a knife. Uh, yeah, I have a knife to cut up the hmm, So Which one? Uh, this, <laughs> uh, this became um, extremely functional for, uh, you know, you guys know a warm lift blade is just a cheap swift blade. Just phenomenal for that. Um, so, yep, yeah, almost called this the Amazon package opener. I love it. 
that that design you know it is it's obviously um speaking in your language in your design language but it is a definitely a different knife and 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 uh negating or get you know getting rid of the flipper tab was a a huge part of it can you hold that back up for a second I just sure wanna, um uh, but it, it definitely is a, a different knife. I like the use of this handle appears to be, was that copper or brass? What is that? Yeah. So this one is brass. So cool. And it's a, it's a titanium liner lock okay. with a steel lock bar insert, <laughs> which means that you can essentially remove the scales from it. And it is a frame lock knife. Oh, a very um, thin, if you a need very, a, a really thin pack away. Exactly. Um, I do like frame lock knives for what they are. They are robust. Again, um, Chris Reeves, you know, invented it. And for good reason, it is one of the most um, famous and ubiquitous designs uh, for a, a, a folding knife. Um, it just works well. Um, so moving into a frame lock, I didn't want to just do, excuse me, moving into a liner lock. I didn't want to mm -hmm. just do a traditional, you know, thin liner lock. Uh, I want to make sure that one, it was titanium, uh, mm -hmm. which keeps the weight down. Uh, it did have a lock bar insert, um, which is unusual that, for a liner lock. Right. Exactly. Um, well, right. Because most of them are steel liners. Um, and I needed to have that, that steel on steel interface. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I, I wanted it titanium to keep the weight down. And I love that. Uh, when people ended up getting this knife, the, the feedback I was getting was, I opened this knife and said, wow, it's so light. Um, and then I ruined that by making <laughs> brass scales for it as well yeah. and made it go, oh, wow, it's really heavy. <laughs> this is a boat anchor, but who cares? It's so, uh, exactly. and it's going to patina so nicely. Mm -hmm. And the knife already has a futuristic retro feel to it, um, uh, uh, not to box it in. But when I look at it, it, it to me has that kind of character. It looks both old and new at the same time. So with with patina on that handle, it's it's going to be it's going to be a knockout. Before we get to, I want to I want to talk about your new model, the Isotope, and uh, it is an integral. And I want to find out about the challenges of designing and producing an integral. But before we get there, I want to find out about your production process. Okay, so you design. I know that you're very very fluid in CAD. That's your that's an area where you can express yourself, get the designs out of your head. But once the design is made, what do you do from there? So. I like to tell the story about how I ended up um, working with Best Tech. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had my, my prototype uh, with me at Blade Show 2019. Uh, they did do the, the, um, uh, my, my, the prototype as well for the, the impulse. And Adam Purvis, who I reached out to a while before that, said, hey, I have a knife design, uh, you know, any any suggestions he was very gracious and 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 gave me some very amazing in, in information um helped me get the ball rolling on it and suggested best tech. they ended up being phenomenal um i reached out to them with the design and it was an interesting thing to see them say oh me me being a knife a very very new knife designer me only getting a hundred knives for my first run, but me also going, I am very particular about how I want this angle right here and to ensure that it translates from my CAD to your CAD to your machines. To, and they were so nice about it. They, they took the time, you know, for them, this wasn't a 3000 piece run that they were putting into production to send to Blade HQ. This was, my thing that I wanted to ensure was the way I wanted it to be. And they were very gracious about it. Um, we worked through the design process of that impulse. Um, I learned a lot about how to work with a manufacturer that is taking a design. Normally it would be my designs that I would go into production with the, uh, the way that I worked before. Um, this was, they converted my CAD to their CAD for their system mm -hmm. and 
in doing that, sometimes there's there's some some language lost in the design. And I've seen that in other knives. Um, and I wanted to ensure that did not happen here. Um, and it didn't. When I got the knife in my, the prototype in my hand, it was the exact knife that I designed. And um, I was very, very pleased to see that happen. It, uh, it seems like you can, um, if you have the wherewithal for all the back and forth communication, it seems like when everything is still exists in the CAD world, that's obviously the time to make design tweaks and, and changes and to really um, engage in that sort of design dialogue. Once fixtures are made and a, a prototype is produced and uh, all that, how easy is it from there to make changes? It seems like a lot more is invested at that point. So I don't care. Um, I'm, I was lucky because this was a um, passion project for me. This wasn't, this wasn't something that I needed to feed my kids. So I needed to get it into production. I did, you know, you know what? Fine. Do it that way. And just get it, just get it in, get it out. Right. right. I wanted the, I wanted the exact knife that I wanted. Um, I was fortunate. I, I, I loved my day job. I, you know, was able to provide for my family. Um, I was able to have these knives produced mo mostly because my friends were like, I want one. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted one. So I, I put it, you know, I, I had these, this small batch produced. Um, that batch had to be perfect. It had to be right. Um, if th there were, there, there were actually were some problems with the prototype that um, got, got kind of, uh, kind of missed, but actually, they 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 made the um, the milled pocket go through the entire blade mm. through the other side. Um, Best Tech knew that, and they actually the the person that did the wire cutting for their for their um, for their for the blades for the prototypes just assumed that that was a pocket all the way through because that's what everybody does. Who puts right. a milled slot like that in their blade? So again, it was just something that when I got it, it was unfortunate. Um, that was something that I, they gave me the option to, to have it reproduced or bring it to blade, you know, have it in time for the blade show. Um, so again, I, I just had it produced. Um, but those are the types of things that, you know, it had to be right for production. Um, the flipper tab was slightly different on the prototype. Mm -hmm. I changed it. Um, you know, fortunately I, I had access to a grinder and I was able to, um, change the way that the flipper tab functioned, um, how it felt on on your hand, um, and moved into production with the 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 knife that I wanted to produce. So then, uh, describe the your evolution from going from passion project that your friends kind of already pre ordered to taking the dive into Vero Engineering and taking the dive into. Um, producing knives for people you've never met, you know, and more people than you know. Yeah. So that was a very recent transition. Um, I loved my job. I don't think, I, I think I've been pretty clear about that <laughs> throughout this episode, which is interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I really, I love the people I work with. I love the work that we did. I knew that if I made this correct, uh, it was going to save people's lives. It was going to help people. That's a pretty awesome feeling. I mean, you know, not a lot of people can say that. But in doing that, I was also able to design and get my creative outlet, um, you know, get my technical outlet. I was able to solder things. You know, I was able to do all this stuff. I didn't want to leave. But there, the writing was on the wall. Um, my my synapse. So my first knife, the impulse, sold out uh, in the first night. I don't. That's you know who's never made a knife before, and then their first design sells out um, on launch my, uh, on pre order. Um, my second knife was the synapse. Um, that one sold out uh, within the first day. Um, then the impulse mini came out. That sold out. The axon sold out. Um, the accent sold out in like five, uh, no, like 20 minutes, which was, you know, insane. Um, the next like, knife sold out in six. I, you know, it was one of those things where it was like, 
I can't pretend that I can, you know, I, like, I can't pretend I could do this on the side. I didn't right. want to, I didn't want to wonder a year from then, you know, what it could have been and what, where I could have taken it. Um, so November of last year, um, had a conversation with my wife, uh, and within a month we both quit our jobs and went full force into Vero engineering. Wow. Your wife quit her job too and jumped in. Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a weird thing to say that 2020 was 2020 was what it was. And we tried to make the best of it. Um, oh, I was saying 2020 <laughs> was an awesome year for you, Joseph. It's all right to say. <laughs> 2020 was an awesome year for me. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so the, she was working as a, uh, a teacher. She was a, a, a science teacher. Um, didn't want to quit her job. She loved her job as a teacher. Uh, but it, it, it made sense for us to kind of just put all of our, our eggs in this one basket. Um, I knew that if I was going to do the things that I wanted to do with this company, progress, progress the designs and the brand the way that I was really hoping we could, I was going to need her help. Um, that turned out to be one of the best decisions we ever made. I love working with my wife. Uh, we got an office not too far from here. Um, we, you know, we get to go to the office every day and eat lunch together. And it sounds so stupid, but no, that sounds it's awesome. Such a, yeah, it's, it really has become one of the coolest things to be able to wake up, get the kids ready, and go to work together. I mean, it helps if you marry your best friend for sure, um, yeah. and it also helps if you if you uh, marry someone who's got complementary mind skills. You know, my wife certainly does. To, you know, right. yeah. I, I'd be in a cave without her, of course. But uh, I love the stories of uh, family business. I mean, there are a lot of family knife businesses, and uh, I, I like I like hearing about them because to me, when I think of you know. Uh, American dream or, 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 or self-reliance, which to me is the, uh, you know, the ultimate goal, the idea of producing something, actually making something physical, sending it out into the world, having that thing be a knife, of course, but also having your family built around that effort um, or, or focused around that effort is, I love that. It's inspiring to me. It's funny. Someone, I didn't, I didn't actually realize it until um, somewhat recently, somebody said to me, they go, oh yeah, man, you're living the American dream. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, holy crap, I am living the American dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was really cool to realize that, you know, I was doing, uh, you know, working, working for yourself, making your own thing, yeah. um, doing things like having my phone on me and seeing instant feedback from people that just got their knives and were so excited to make an unboxing video on Instagram, mm. you know, like, and see that, that, that was me when I got my Chris Reeves or that, that you know, that brand new PM2 or something. Um, it's so awesome to see I'm able to do that for other people. Yeah, you're responsible for that joy now, that joy that you've felt many times, that weird feeling, Yeah, that, that weird, you know, compulsive, impulsive feeling. Okay, so you're talking about making things and building things. Let's talk about this, this most recent thing that you are making and building. And uh, I'm talking about the isotope. And uh, it, to me and to my eye, is so far your finest design. I think all your designs... Are, uh, are, you know, compelling and, and beautiful. Uh, but this one is sleek, a little less brutal. And I like brutal, but a little less brutal. And with that, with that huge, well, let's, let's bring a, let's bring one out and take a look at it. Why, why, don't, why don't you talk us through what's so special about this knife? So <clears throat> what's funny is um, it's weird. It's weird doing interviews, right? Um, Nobody ever asked me about the drone that I designed. I never, I never went on a <laughs> podcast and talked about the drone that I designed that, you know, helped an officer 
do something. Drone junkies um, never called you. No. Yeah, right. Exactly. I was never. I was never. You know, they never reached out. I was never, not. I'm not happy about that. Um, so the first interview I did, speaking of Spiderco, was for the um, Millie PM2 PM3 um, Spiderco Facebook group. Amazing group. If you guys like Spiderco, please check them out. Um, really cool place to to hang out and talk about Spidercos. Well, they asked me to be on their their weekly video chat. And uh, it was a very cool experience for me because that was kind of my first thing. And I told them about this prototype that I was working on. This was early 2020. And that's how long I have been, I had the prototype in hand. I have been working on this knife longer than I have worked on any project that I've ever designed. Um, it is a full integral. Describe to people uh, what that means. So a, a traditional folding pocket knife, not a traditional knife, but it uh, could be a traditional knife. Um, a traditional folding, let's say frame lock knife or, or liner lock knife usually has a sandwich construction. So it has a, uh, it has a scale on one side a back spacer and a scale on the other side, sandwiching the blade between them. And it's so it's a three part construction for the handle. Mm -hmm. a, an integral is just that. The entire handle is integrated together. It is one solid piece of titanium that is milled out <clears throat> for the handle with the lock bar all milled out of that same piece of titanium. That's amazing. I, I know, I know that it, integrals have been around for a while now, but to me, it's still astounding. Uh, so, what, so, why did it take so long? What's what are the design challenges of uh, of the of an integral? So, there was a couple things that that, that pushed this back a full year. Um, one of those main things was price point. This is not a cheap knife to produce. Okay. So the, 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 the media itself, the titanium is a larger slab of titanium and the milling process is a substantially longer milling process. Um, so all of my blades are M390 steel. Um, every knife that I produced, it's my favorite steel. Um, Somebody just did a, a, a YouTuber, um, Wes Newman, just did a uh, Rockwell rating on one of my knives that he had, and it got over 60 Rockwell. Hmm. Um, yeah, love hearing that. You know, um, if you're getting an M390 steel blade, you're hoping that it's going to hit around that 60 Rockwell. The edge retention on that is phenomenal. Uh, but one of the drawbacks is the reason why M390 is so expensive. It's, it's expensive to produce, but it's expensive to, to machine. You go through bits quicker. You have to change out the bits. You have to, um, you, you, somebody physically has to change out the bits. You need new bits. You need stronger bits. Um, so the blade itself is more expensive to produce. Mm -hmm. Same goes with the handle. Titanium, it's, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard uh, metal and it takes a longer time to mill out when it's not just doing one side then the other side you're actually milling out the entirety of the of the handle and and even if it weren't such a um, uh, tough or a hard material still milling out from a piece of wood something that precise to the point where you can get so thin where that uh, lock bar relief is that from mm -hmm. a single piece of titanium you could have that lock bar um, integrated Mm -hmm. into the the single milling i mean to me that, that that's what's amazing i mean yeah uh, getting the tolerances correct on this uh is obviously very important uh getting it to the point where you can do that over and over um <clears throat> it's it's funny because <clears throat> excuse me that actually goes back to what we were just talking about changing out the bits right you're gonna get a tolerance change uh, through every single bit. The bit itself changes over mm. time, the more it's used. And when to change out that bit, it's something that the machinist, that a good machinist knows. When to change out the bit, 
um, and how often uh, and how many passes it can do. Um, but the variance in those bits create variances in the tolerances of the of the knives and the blades. So now you have to work with those tolerances. Um, you can't just you usually can't just take two of the same knife, take them apart, put them back together, uh, swapping blades, doing stuff like that. Mm. Without there being um, something affected by that, um, and that th it's a lot harder to do that when the handle is just one solid piece. You can't just yeah. swap this, you know, little things around to get that to the right tolerances and to the right spec. Um, so obviously a big thing was price point. Um, I didn't know, I wasn't comfortable knowing that I would be able to produce enough of these that, that made it, that warranted the production of it. I didn't mm -hmm. know that I would sell them. Um, I'm always the person that questions it. You know, uh, I'm never that, I'll never be that guy that goes, oh, the design's great. People are going to love this. Let's just put it out and sell it. I'm, I'm not that guy. I obsess over it. Um, and I think that, you know, ho hopefully that's, you know, kind of a good thing. Um, so uh, so once I got this, pr the first prototype for the isotope, I was very happy with it. I showed it to the guys for the PM2, um, Millie PM2 Club video, and they loved it. And that almost almost pushed me towards the uh to to make that decision to go into production with it a lot of feedback on it saying this is fantastic i love it let's you know produce it i want to buy it but it wasn't perfect it, it wasn't exactly how i wanted it to be the, the the flipper tab um i did a small change to how the um oh, how it protrudes the, on the front the, the the geometry of the flipper tab is a little bit different um, how it functions is, is a little different. Its location relative to the pivot is a little bit different. Um, and once I got that first prototype back, uh, it worked. It worked well. I was very happy with it, but I thought it could be changed a little bit. Um, changed that. Changed a couple other things that I wanted to see changed. Actually went through a second, a Mark II prototype. Hmm. Got that in. Uh, and I kept some of the features that I changed. I went back on some of the features. Got the... Uh, got the prototype in for this. So these are actually the production samples <clears throat> for this knife. And I am I am very glad that I went through that process of the iter iterative process of changing this knife. And I mean, I, it's just... I mean, okay, so let me let me give you my uh, my my uh, my first impressions, not not actually having that in hand. Um, but I I love the clip point blade. You know, you've 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 gone from um, uh, what was it, kind of a drop point to uh, to a sheep's foot back to a clip. I think your very first one was kind of a clip point. I love the blade on this one. I love the full uh, show side um, inlay, just gorgeous. So this and, has the uh, the natural micarta inlay oh, on it. God, yeah. Yeah, is that um, that's a three and a half inch blade, right? No, this <laughs> it's funny. Um, this is a three point eight inch blade. Three point eight, even yeah. better. Yeah, this is this one. It's funny because <clears throat> my impulse, the first knife design, it's not a small knife, right? So um, I have so sometimes I have chucks. I have a impulse mini, um, and on camera they sometimes look the same. Yeah. Um, so the impulse is not a small knife and people kept saying, Hey, produce a smaller knife. And that's why I ended up going with the, you know, a, a slightly smaller, uh, a synapse. But when I was designing the, the, the isotope, I like big knives. They, 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 you're, you're sometimes you just kind of feel like you're getting more for your money, right? You're, <laughs> You know, yeah. you, uh, you because spending, you are, <laughs> you literally are, right? It, it, it's 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 um, it's yeah, it's it's like oh yeah, I paid. This is um like five hundred dollars. The the pre order price on them was four fifty base. Um, but if you're paying five hundred dollars for a knife, you want to know that the blade took a long time to machine and the, the handles. Yeah, it's a it's a big chunk of titanium, you know. Well, so yeah, right. And what were the so when you designed it on CAD, 
I, I'm working backwards here. What were the half of me thinks? Oh, it's just easy to design. It's 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 easier to design. You have to find where you put the screws and all that. But is it harder to design the guts and how you actually get them in there? Because you can't. You don't have the freedom to open it up. Yeah. So the a big design problem that we ran into was the stop pin. Um, I was trying to figure out interesting ways to incorporate the stop pin because when you're when you have a, an integral knife um, or when you have a traditional sandwich design, the the stop pin gets inserted into one of the the scales, um, and then you can sandwich the other scale on top of it and pin the stop pin in there. The pivot's easy. The pivot you can you can put in. Um, the blade you can slide in through the end. Uh, but that stop pin you can't do. Mm. And some people get around that by drilling the stop pin in and then and you know attaching yeah. it through. Um, That's what Benchmade so, did. Yeah. So what I was able to do was the the um, the 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 insert. Um, I was trying to figure out a way to incorporate the removing the insert, putting the stop pin in mm -hmm. that way, and and then and then kind of using this in this insert as uh, you know the sandwich design. Yeah. The problem with that is the insert tolerances because of its material, you can't use it to hold that. So I would have had to create another um, uh, another like insert like a bezel to put that in that would exactly so now you're talking about creating a a sandwich design out of an integral um so i kind of worked on that for a while um and i ended up going with the some some may say a, i i've never been a a um a pivot collar guy I've never actually owned a knife with a pivot collar. It just didn't seem, it, it just seemed like extra. Right. You know, uh, it was never one of those things that I, I was like, oh yeah, that, that needs a pivot collar. But what we ended up doing was putting the pivot collar on here and see if I could get it in the yeah. light. And the pivot collar being a titan titanium pivot collar, uh, once you take this pivot screw out, that pivot collar comes out and it has a small lobe that sticks out towards the front here. And that's what holds the 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 lock the the stop pin in. Um, and it works and it works really well. And um, that's what we ended up doing. And and I'm really happy with it. Uh, what's really cool about that is that um, a lot of my knives that you see on Instagram um, have Timascus on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this knife is actually going to come with a Timascus pivot collar. Uh, if somebody ordered the Timascus clip for it as well, um, and I think that actually looks really cool. I'm, I'm really, I'm really kind of excited about that. That is cool, and it's also a uh, a creative solution to a problem that actually may be better than the original. You know, that's the, that's always interesting when people come up with workarounds for something or solutions for a problem, and it ends up being even better than what they were trying to emulate in the first place yeah exactly so um so it's kind of tr it's tried and tested um actually the Z the the zerk has it's it's easier to see the zerks is actually mm -hmm. also produced by best tech as well um so we i was working with best tech on my integral um you know a year ago they actually never produced one and working on this working on this design um it just kind of seemed like the right thing to do it, it really did fit the knife um, it really did fit what we needed it to do, um, and 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 we went from there. Um, and another small another small problem we had with it was the the inlay uh, needs to be held in. It's held in up here by the pivot screw, and and down here um, we had to add a small screw. Uh, a lot of companies that do this similar thing have an inlay, they epoxy it in there. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it's, I don't wanna say it's a, it's an easy solution, but it's a, you know, an elegant, just epoxy it in and it's there. And um, I think actually Riot, when they do that, um, they epoxy it in and then machine the titanium around 
having that in there. Right. Um, so it actually becomes really uh, kind of a seamless. Uh, Best Tech did a phenomenal job. You know, you can't actually feel this seam. Um, but I like that a lot of people um, modify, mm -hmm. make make my knives their knives. Um, my knives come in a plethora of different fun colors and backspacers, clip colors. Um, you know, it's just, I've always been a type of person that I don't necessarily want my knife to look like that guy's knife. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to, I want to change things up. So I didn't want the, the, uh, the inlay to be permanent. I wanted somebody to be able to swap it up. This is black and this is red and cut carbon fiber. So beautiful. No, probably no one's going to want to swap it out, but just like having scales made for your favorite knife that you can, you know, change it up. It's like putting a new, a different tie on with the same suit, you know, <coughs> excuse me. I, I mean, that's that sort of modular inlay thing is something. It seems to me that's only going to come from a knife guy who's turned knife maker, knife designer. Um, uh, you also make other things, pocket tools. Um, tell me a little bit about those and, and what the impetus was for creating the pocket tool. Um, somebody asked me if I, somebody asked me if I dream up my designs, like they, I, I think they use in the example of, um, like one of the Beatles woke up one day and already had this song <laughs> written. And I was like, no, man, I, I sleep, <laughs> I sleep when I'm sleeping. Like <laughs> that's not, that's not when I think about it. And I was like, when do I kind of think up these things? And I realized it's while I'm driving. Mm. Um, that is when I, I, I actually distinctly remember sitting at a toll booth, um, when I was designing the, the impulse and, and thinking about the flipper tab. Um, and while I was driving one day, I was like, man, I'm at this light. I wish I could tighten my pivot. That's it. I just wish I had something right here that I could tighten my pivot. And I was like thinking about it. And a lot of people made, um, uh, little little pry bars that have the Phillips and flathead quarter inch uh, bit kind of cut into the, the the pry bar and then held on with bands or something like that. Right. I was like, why not use uh, four millimeter bits? Because then I could have my T8 uh, Weha mm -hmm. T8 driver in there. And then wait, well, why not stick it in the end of it? So this is what was born. This is the fulcrum. I have a milled out pocket here that matches the milled out pocket on my blade. So there's a little bit of design crossover mm -hmm. there. Um, and in that pocket has two bits. It holds two bits. You can put whatever bits you want in there. Weha makes a, a plethora of them. Um, and they are held in by these O-rings. And once you take them out, you can actually take the bit and it gets inserted into the end here <laughs> and it has a magnetic holder. And now you can adjust your pivot at the light. Uh, that's cool. Joseph, I got to say, it's the first pry bar pocket tool type thingy that I've ever ever been attracted to and i'm a i'm a shallow guy it's an attraction i think i think it's cool and it is actually something i would carry i really like that thank you that is the best compliment um i i i get that often and it is like it's the one thing that honestly i was never a pry bar guy mm -hmm. i didn't understand them really um most of them didn't have clips so Where they had to just be <laughs> yeah, it's just, it doesn't make sense. They're floating around in your pocket or, you know. Um, what are you prying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what's interesting is the, the, the what are you prying part, this was such an afterthought. Um, I, did, I did an interview where somebody, you know, I kind of didn't even rationalize it in my head. They go, so, you know, tell me about it. When you were designing your pry bar, what, what did you, you know, what were you thinking? And I was like, Oh no, I was designing a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> like, like this is a screwdriver 
that you know holds the bits inside of it, and it just happens to have a, a, a flathead pry bar at the end of it. Um, and it, you know, and then I and then after carrying it and keeping it in my pocket, I would go, oh wait, no, I have a pry bar. And then I realized, oh, having a pry bar is actually not a bad thing to have on you. Yeah, yeah, it actually does come in handy. It's you know, uh, oftentimes you'll. It's like having a knife on you. If you're a non-knife person, you you discover all the uses. So, uh, where where do you want to see Vero Engineering headed? You've you've made the jump with your wife full time into this. Uh, how do you want to see it grow? So, a big reason that we ended up uh, moving into Vero full time um, actually ended up being our Facebook group. Uh, a friend of mine, the same friend that challenged me to design something different, um, said, you need to create a Facebook group. And I was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be on Facebook. <laughs> it's like, I'm, no, thanks. Um, but he forced me and we created a Facebook group and it has become one of the best places for us. Um, the people there... Um, are so that's actually our facebook store the facebook group I'm, I'm not even sure you can link to it through there um so the facebook group is uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash vero eng and it is um it's become a place where people can go and just chat about their knives chat about vero stuff um help each other find things so if you if you guys aren't familiar with my 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 company, um, it's actually it's actually kind of hard to get a Vero knife. Um, we're a small startup company. You know, we can't produce three thousand knives like some of the other companies. Um, and fortunately, they're kind of sought after. Um, so the secondary prices are kind of high, um, and it's hard to get. So being there, people are you know helping out and and helping find. Um, so that was one of the things where Michelle and I, my wife and I were like, you know, that that helped us push us towards the um, moving 100% into Vero. Um, so growing that means that my company is growing. Having more people there, having a bigger community around it means that we're doing what we're what we set out to do. Um, so hopefully, you know, in a a year from now, I could look back and say, we grew that community. Um, the people that bought our knives, hopefully we're able to, you know, we doubled our, our production quantity, then we doubled it again, and we actually recently doubled it one more time. Wow. Yeah, so so we are doing that thing where we're able to get the, the knives and, and uh, pocket tools, which actually sell out also, which is crazy, um, into those people's hands. In a year from now, that community, if it grows the way I'm, I'm hoping it will, um, I'll have done what I hoped to set out to do. Um, uh, so besides the Facebook group, uh, how, sh how should people pursue uh, getting behind the wheel of a Vero engineering knife? So VeroEngineering.com, um, just below the first slide, is a newsletter sign up. That is by far the best way. Um, okay. I get in uh, Vero Engineering on Instagram. It's a great way to interact with me. I, I, I love that people reach out to me through there. Um, and they always ask me how to do it. And I, and I always have to send them here. So if you scroll down just below this picture, there's a, uh, a sign up. Sign up there. You'll get a welcome email. Um, but that is where you're going to find out about drops. The, okay. the, the pre-orders. Um, I will always send out an email and it will always have the direct links. Um, one thing I, I like to do that I, I don't, I think other people um, maybe do it a little bit differently, but when you get my email and you see that knife that you want to buy, when, when you click that link, it's going to bring you to the product page for that knife and you can read about it and um, you know, you can find out all the information. But when that knife drops, that is the exact same link. You go there. That's mm. the knife. It's. Yeah. I don't want it to be confusing. I don't want people to have to try to figure it out. That's it's the a, knife that you want. That's the knife that you're going to be able to buy when it drops. Have a fast internet because <laughs> they, the, they, they've been leaning towards um, selling out pretty quickly, which I'm, which I really, really appreciate. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool. Yeah, yeah. Be, be quick. I've, 
I've never been good at that. Like just, just jumping on the, jumping on the, uh, jumping on the drop but uh yeah everyone definitely keep your eyes open for the isotope when when is that coming when when is that available or right so the the pre-order uh sold out (laughs) sorry uh but (laughs) i held some back uh to do post-production drop so the the pre-order for the isotope sold out in six minutes um last month yeah thank you the uh but i'm holding back a a couple hundred of them to do a post-production drop so okay. again, go to the get go on to the, that newsletter. Yeah, get on that newsletter because that's the best way to find out when that drop is going to be. Awesome. And I actually have a, a new design coming out, the Neuron, which is a small double detent flipper. Um, so non-locking, um, two under three inches. Uh, so it's a UK legal. Uh, it's a nice fifth pocket knife. Um, the pre-order for that is to be announced, but that's kind of going to be one of my next pre-orders. Um, so if that's the knife that you're interested in and the axons again, uh, I'm going to pre-order also. So, well, that's a it, great, I- a that's, a, that's a great idea for, for another design. You know, you, you have some of your big, big side covered. You've got integral covered. Yeah. A, a double detent non-locking sounds perfect. Joseph Vero, thank you so much for coming on the knife junkie podcast. It's been a pleasure meeting you. I, I can't wait to, I, I need to add one of your knives to my collection. We'll make that um, happen. <laughs> I will. I will indeed make that happen. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure, sir. Thanks for having me again. Congratulations, man. 200 episodes. Ah, That's thank awesome. You. Now, you're making me feel old now. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. There he goes, Joseph Vero of Vero Engineering, living the American dream, not to put too much pressure on him, but uh, uh, a design, a knife design enthusiast and a designer who's just brought those two passions together and is tearing things up. What beautiful knives. I love the design. So clean. So clean, Joseph. Beautiful designs and innovation in that uh, in that flipper. So definitely keep your eyes out uh, for Joseph Vero and Vero Design and uh, I'm sorry, Vero Engineering and uh, get on that newsletter so you can find out when the drops are. And of course, check them out on Instagram. Uh, another family business making tremendous knives uh, for all of us here. And for all of us here at the Knife Junkie Podcast, I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank you for listening, tuning in, and for Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying join us here again next week for another great interview. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.